Welcome to the Elixir Kitchen. Um, thank you for joining us. We have a very exciting class today. Uh, my name is uh, Jeremy Capone. I'm the wellness chef for the uh, Cancer Rehabilitation Survivorship Program. And joining me, as always, lovely Stephanie Gladman. Hi, everybody. Yes, I am Stephanie Gladman, the registered dietitian with the Elixir Kitchen Program. Um, and today's class is going to be geared on getting back into our routines. So, yes. Unfortunately, summer is starting to wind down and that playful joy um, kind of <laughs> do what feels good um, is, is very different when we start to get into kind of more the cooler months. Um, and so, you know, you might notice that your physical um, activity, your day to day looks differently. And so maybe also the clothes that you're wearing and no doubt um, this also plays into effect the foods that you're eating. Right. So in the summertime, we might be more inclined to kind of go towards more of those barbecued, grilled vegetables, and fish, um, having more fresh salads. And then as the colder weather comes in, we might want heartier stews or soups, um, grilling those vegetables. Um, so, you know, really just to say that it is okay. <laughs> I'm very normal that our eating behaviors um, change with the seasons, right? So we can't always eat the same thing all the time. That gets boring. Um, and luckily for us living here in Canada, we experience those different seasons and um, those different foods as well. Um, and so really a lot of people take this time to kind of reset, renew, um, have new routines and no doubt food is part of that. Um, and when we're having that goal of eating well and planning for our meals, um, it, it is a step by step process. And Jeremy and I talk about this quite a lot. So a lot of times, you know, after a cancer diagnosis, many people will say, oh, I want to get back into a new routine. And, you know, I want to eat well and I want to eat better, which is awesome. Um, but with that motivation, um, sometimes people are too excited and forget to kind of really break down the process into step by step uh, points. OK, so today we're here to really focus on that and um, share some of the tips and tricks and strategies that work um, with our patients and ourselves. Um, and so really that first step is carving out time, okay, to plan what it is that you want to be making, right? So that might be looking at our Elixir Kitchen website and browsing for inspiration. It might be going through um, your different cookbooks that you have, um, or maybe scrolling through Instagram or Pinterest. Um, so I always say, like, make this be an enjoyable time. Take maybe 20, 30 minutes to really just you know, get cozy, have a cup of tea um, to kind of find that inspiration. Um, and then make a list, make a list of those foods that are those meals that you would like to make perhaps within the next month or two months for this season. Um, and just remember that it's time, right? So maybe it's not making a new meal <laughs> or recipe every day, uh, but maybe we start with once a week. And then kind of taking that time to look at the calendar and okay so the first step is okay what do i want to have second step is what ingredients do i need to get what do i have so taking an inventory of what's in your home um and then okay when am i going to the grocery store <laughs> and then again when am i going to have time to make this meal right um so just really dividing that up um, and making it easy for yourself. So when you have that step-by-step -step plan, um, it takes a little less time um, to plan in advance and to have something in the future. So our recipes that we're focusing on today um, are going to be kind of more of that fast cooking that you can have on hand. Um, but we're gonna go through some points that focus on um, foods that really help with focus. So as we create this new routine, whether it's back to school or back to work in a different capacity, we want our mind to stay focused. We want the energy to have throughout the day. So without further ado, let's start with our first recipe. Um, and I'll let Jer take that away. Yes, uh, thanks Stephanie. So we are making uh, a dish that um, I think it, it suits um, our discussion uh, 
well today. And this is really an accessible recipe because we're using a lot of pantry items, okay? And um, sometimes recipes are, we can, we can uh, make batch recipes so that we set ourselves up for some meals in the future when we don't have the time to cook. Sometimes, you know, we can focus on recipes where there's not a lot of prep involved and we're just using what's available, what's in our pantry, what's in our freezer, maybe some things that are in our fridge. So we're going to make a really nice uh, pasta dish. We don't do pasta that often uh, on, on our show. And, and so this is a really nice, simple pasta dish that um, I love because it's something that I, I do often. Um, and especially when you don't have the time and energy to cook, um, it's really easy to grab uh, a can and a jar, you know, and whip a couple things together to make a really nice tasty meal. And the star of today's recipe or this recipe uh, are sardines. Yeah. Now, so I'm, we love I'll sardines. Just jump in yeah. for a moment here. So, yeah. So I wanted to just say that, yes, pasta dishes, you know, there's something that we don't always make. And a lot of people think, oh, carbs are bad. Um, but really, this type of dish, like think of a carb as a side to all the other great ingredients that you're using in today's dish. And it's a one pot dish. So this is super, super easy. One bowl, one place. Um, yeah, so show us the star, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be using sardines. Sardines are, I think, you know, sardines, anchovies, you know, canned mackerel, they all kind of fall in this uh, same category of ingredients that can be a little intimidating, that can maybe turn some people off, but um, they are extremely accessible um, and they can be really healthy too, right, Steph? I mean, yeah, protein. so so they're easy, you know, what Jared said, but also they're um, a food that's high in what we call omega-3 fatty acids, okay? So this is a type of fat that our body does not make, so we need to get it through food. Um, generally, the best sources are from fish, or um, so things like salmon, trout, cod, also sardines, and anchovies. Um, and omega-3 fatty acids have a role in helping reducing inflammation in the body. So we know that cancer is an inflammatory disease, and so we need foods, because we don't make them in the body, to help with reducing that inflammation. And so just a reminder, inflammation is a good thing, right? So you get a cut on your skin, your body sends inflammatory you know, signals so that it could heal it. But that long-term inflammation is what is, is what is dangerous, right? That causes diseases. Um, so having a, a diet that's rich in antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties is super uh, beneficial. And so those omega-3 fatty acids are exactly that. Another thing that we see um, is that they do also play a role in the development of brain and eye um, health, right? So there are certain studies that indicate how this can help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's, right? They do help with kind of that focus throughout the day um, in other studies. So just something to consider and to try to have these um, omega-3 fatty acids regularly, um, so about two to three times a week, um, having a serving um, is the recommendation. Having anchovies, sardines, salmon, these are all protein options as well. So think about when you're making that balanced plate. So in this case, it's like more of a bowl or a plate. <laughs> Again, a one pot dish. When you're checking off those things, right, we always want to have uh, protein. So that's what's counting here as your sardines. Um, you're also getting some healthy fats in there as well. Um, but you also want to make sure you're getting different colored vegetables. Um, so that helps with the phytochemicals, those phytonutrients that actually help protect your healthy cells against cancer. And, you know, you want that variety of color. Um, and then you have your whole grains. Okay. And so a portion of whole grains like rice, pasta, quinoa, barley is a, a cup, okay? So that's about the size of your fist, okay? So I'm not talking like three platefuls, <laughs> right? So we balance out the other parts of the plate with healthy fats and proteins. 
So, uh, okay, so we're gonna jump into the dish. It, this is a really, really simple recipe to put together. Uh, it doesn't really take too much time, which is great. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add everything to our bowl here. So we're gonna start off with our sardines. You can do this with canned tuna, you can do this with anchovies, you can do this with canned mackerel as well. Um, for this dish in particular, I do prefer to get the sardines that are packed in olive oil. So try to go for, you know, and it, they're still really inexpensive, but um, it's just a slightly better quality. Um, if it's not, if it's packed in water or if um, sometimes they might have like a, uh, maybe just a regular veg oil or something, you can drain that out. Um, for this, I want like a nice olive oil. Uh, so if it is packed in olive oil, we're going to save that. We're actually going to put that all in the dish and we're going to add our sardines I actually opened up a can earlier so i'll put that in here you can find sardines that are in a can that are skinless and boneless so if you are kind of like a little picky about it or you're trying it for the first time um you can go for those ones that are skinless and boneless um otherwise i'll show you here um this is one of the sardines here like that I can, it's, it's pretty easy to sort of pick the bones out if you just split it down the middle and the sort of spine, sorry if you're a little squeamish, but the spine kind of comes right out. It's pretty easy. Uh, also, the bones are so tiny um, that uh, you won't really notice them that much. Uh, okay, so we have, this is, for this recipe, it's about two cans of sardines. Okay, that's to oil. Um, then we're going to add some capers. You can add olives too. I want to bring some vibrancy, some really nice flavor punch to this. Um, especially because, I mean, the sardines are tasty, but they are on the slightly fishier side. So kind of like tuna, like I don't want to throw anyone off, but like tuna or like anchovies, they bring uh, a little bit of fishiness, but that just means flavor. Really. It's going to bring this really, really nice savory flavor um, but i do want to balance that out with some uh some brininess some acidity so the capers are going to really play well with the anchovies and then some lemon too so the lemon is going to bring some really nice freshness some brightness and i'm using all parts of the lemon so i'm going to use the outside i want some like zest of the lemon there that's going to have all that lemon oil really really flavorful and the juice too, um, for this, I would go for like three tablespoons or so. So I'm using half a lemon, but if, um, depends on how juicy your lemon is, you might want a little bit more. And what I'm doing here, a little trick to just to catch the seeds, is I'm just squeezing the lemon through my fingers. You can do this through a sieve as well just so you're not fishing out seeds after. It's never pleasant. <laughs> All right. And if uh, didn't come with olive oil, like this had a little bit in it, but I want about three tablespoons in total of the olive oil. So I'm gonna add a little bit more and this is gonna really form the body of the sauce here. Yeah, and again, like when you are making dishes, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I wanna avoid fat, it's not good for me not the case right so again you're having some proteins which are providing like you know energy they're giving you good carbohydrates which break down into sugars into your body that feeds your mind your brain it feeds your muscles like that's your fuel right but we also want to couple that with healthy proteins and healthy fats so that olive oil is actually going to keep you satiated it's going to keep you full for longer which is a super important part of you know, the eating experience. Not only does it add flavor, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, when we're thinking about, especially if you're going through treatment or after, a lot of people, their appetite is low, okay? So you really wanna make sure that you're not necessarily eating in volume and making every bite count. So adding that healthy fat into the dish is actually super important because it's like you don't have to eat as much to get the value and the nutrition quality um, because you have small bites that are boosted with nutrients um, and energy. Okay, and then the last ingredient here, 
Um, this is just some frozen green beans. And this is something that I, I like to throw into dishes every once in a while. Again, it's a really accessible ingredient. You can keep them in the freezer. Um, and this, it, these are defrosted, so I'm just kind of throwing it in the bowl here. Um, but uh, you can definitely throw it in the pasta water while it's cooking to, to sort of blanch them a little bit. Um, but really, really easy to use. And then a little trick that I, I picked up learning, um, learning of this dish is you could put this bowl and use like a nice heat proof bowl like this. Put it over the, um, the pot that is sort of heating up for your water. So this has my boiling water that I'm going to be cooking the pasta in. And heating this up will just gently warm your ingredients through. Um, and just warming the ingredients through just helps the sauce kind of come together uh, mm -hmm. a little bit versus it, everything sort of being either room temp or cold, and then you're adding hot pasta to it. Um, if the ingredients are warm and we're adding the hot pasta to it, it'll actually, the flavors will actually blend together a little bit better. So um, this is a nice little trick. I mean, this is something we do uh, if we're melting chocolate, right? This little double boiler technique, uh, but it is a nice way to kind of get your sauce started. Um, and again, I don't need another pot to get that warmed up or like a pan to, you know, saute this. It's all done over here in the bowl. And I love that we're using frozen green beans. Um, I always say this, just as nutritious as fresh, um, but make it easy for yourself. They're already pre-washed, pre-cut. And, you know, a lot of times we think like, oh, we get go to the grocery store it also limits the amount of time that you're you're saving time by using the frozen vegetables because you can keep them for long you don't have to use all of them at once right so if you're in a pinch and you're like ah oh, what vegetable am i having here you go use a frozen one and i'll actually add that i recently saw grilled frozen vegetables um at the supermarket the other day and they were frozen <laughs> Um, and they tasted amazing. Like I actually really, really enjoyed them. So there's so much great technology coming out with frozen vegetables and fruit. Um, obviously when things are in season, go ahead, enjoy. Um, but they're cheap, they're budget friendly, um, and they're easy to use. So make them part of your regular routine. Um, and just keep it on for a couple minutes. Uh, you just want the ingredients to sort of warm through. Um, everything's already cooked, so we don't really have to cook anything here. Um, so you can just kind of, you know, test either the, you know, green bean or a piece of the sardine. And once it's nice and warm, you know, we're good to go. For the pasta, this is already done. Um, just finished cooking. Uh, you can use honestly any pasta you like. I think with this dish here, I do prefer a longer noodle. Uh, so something like uh, linguine or spaghetti or even like the thinner spaghettini, which is what I'm using today, works really well, but it's really up to you. Now, in terms of the grain, that's obviously, you know, an option as well. So I'm using whole grain here, uh, but stuff like depending on, you know, someone's needs, they might need to switch that too. Yeah, totally. So if somebody is experiencing GI issues, right? Lots of gas, bloating, maybe uh, diarrhea, then a whole grain option might not be the best uh, choice. Um, but for the most part, you know, if you can tolerate it, um, always choose gluten free if you need to. But like I said, you know, um, this is not to say, like a lot of people I, I know that I speak with have a lot of like affinity and um, you know, like X danger <laughs> against um, whole grains. And I'm actually here to tell you that there's no reason to fear the whole grains, right? Um, having pasta, again, it's an easy, quick dish, right? You're feeling tired, you're fatigued, you need something kind of right away to have. This is great. You know, I'm not suggesting to have a whole plate of pasta. One cup, one fistful cooked, that's all you need and then complement it, supplement it with healthy proteins and healthy fats and add in those vegetables and to keep you satiated and full for longer. So to finish the dish, again, real easy. I'm just taking that pasta out and I'm, I'm just giving it a light shake, but I'm not fully draining it because I actually want some of that pasta water in here. Um, and that sort of starchy, slightly starchy water uh, when we're mixing it together with the olive oil and the lemon juice, um, and just give it a little toss either with your tongs or 
even with the bowl itself, that'll sort of emulsify a little bit and give you this really nice homogenous sauce. Um, and then to finish, this is optional, but I'm gonna throw a little bit of parm on here. Um, I know there's sort of like this unwritten rule, don't put cheese on any, any dish with fish, uh, but break the rules, do what you like. And especially with something like sardines or anchovies that are a little more robust, they'll hold up to the flavor of the parm. And again, just toss that through and the heat from that, the, the pasta that you just took out is gonna melt that cheese a little bit. And then if we wanna throw some fresh herbs on there, again, because we are using some richer flavors, um, the fresh herbs will help to brighten it up a little bit. So that is it. I'm going to plate this. And again, like I said, this is this is a pantry recipe, right? We're using a couple canned items, a frozen, you know, vegetable, uh, dry pasta, and putting a, a dish together really as long as the pasta takes to cook. So this is like a seven-minute cook on the pasta. Yeah. Within 10, 10 minutes, you can have this really healthy recipe, right? Yeah, and I think that, you know, getting back into new schedules for the September autumn season, you know, again, like I said, our schedules and our routines change at this time of year. Okay, And even if you're not going back to school or you're not going back to work, right, there's something about the newness of a new season that comes about with the different food changes, different exercise routines. And that's okay. Like, work with it to your advantage. Um, and part of that is, like I said, eating. And just to reiterate, I think it's super important, like when we're focusing on, you know, maybe new projects or whether that's around the house or at work or back to school, you don't necessarily have time to think about what's for dinner or what's for lunch, et cetera. So having those staples in your pantry in your freezer um, is really gonna give you that extra step up to help you um coordinate and plan for making you know your goals happen and there we go so our sardine and lemon awesome. pasta, pantry pasta all done ready to Beautiful. serve i'll do both shots i'm not sure what camera we're showing here um and this smells amazing like, i would love to just eat this entire plate now but we can't we have to move on we have a show <laughs>